What's good, everybody? This is the G with a PhD. And uh, you're tuned in to Green Gorilla Channel. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button so you can give me a like so I can continue to provide you with some real good, real nice content. So, you know, for the most part, uh, I'm new to this YouTube world and uh, I'm just trying to find my way through it. So excuse me if on the first few videos, I was for the most part yelling and I think there's a time and a place for that, but I'm about to dial back my tone. Um, but today what I want to discuss is an article I ran across because in this article, I hear reflected what's often in the manosphere reflected, but in a different way, from a different angle or from a different perspective. I've often heard many YouTubers in the manosphere refer to gynocracy and to hyenas and to black women as matriarchal. So I wanna, I just ran across this article. It's crazy because the article was written by a feminist by the name of Catherine J. Wu. Now, when you scroll down the article, you'll find that Catherine Wu is a PhD student in microbiology, in immunobiology at Harvard University. She's uh, describing herself as the co-director emeritus of science and the news. And I'm pretty sure at the current moment, she in all likelihood has obtained her PhD. I, I don't know that because I haven't delved deeper into the matter, but I mean, this article is so fucking absurd. You can't even make this shit up. So the, the title of the article is called How a Pseudo Penis Packing Hyena Smashes the Patriarchy's Assumptions. Lessons from Female Spotted Hyenas for the Me Too Era. Now, if this is not a clear example of how feminism has found its way into the hard sciences, I don't know what is. I, I don't know what is. And I just want to read excerpts from this article to articulate and to demonstrate how fucking sick our culture has become and how misandrist our culture has become and how feminism has moved away from has veered off the path of trying to usher in an era in which women are on an equal footing to men in relation to having social and political equality alongside men to the point to where it's now a means by which women or articulating their ambitions to have power over men. I mean, what perfect example can you use from the mammalian world, from the animal kingdom, other than hyenas? And I think it's perfect for the people in the manosphere to refer to women who seek to rule, who seek to usher in a gynocracy, who seek to run shit. They don't want to share power with men. They want to run shit. They want to control the household. It, the, but the, the ironic thing about this is that initially, feminism had nothing to do with ambitions to rule over men, but to be co-regents with, to be co-rulers alongside of men. I mean, the expression was that they wanted negative liberty 
and control over their reproduction such that they could be free from the burdens associated with motherhood so that they could self-develop in ways not predetermined by nature. And so it seems as if now there's something different that they're after, the feminists. There's something more that they're in search of or that they're seeking for. So this article, in my viewpoint, kind of clearly articulates what those ambitions are and what they might be. So I'm going to read, as I said, excerpts from this article such that you can get a kind of understanding about what these contemporary feminists are after. So let me just begin. So, and I quote from the opening. Like many young women, I grew up aspiring to fit into a patriarchal world. While the boys in my elementary school were encouraged to focus on their professional achievement and financial success, I was instructed to cross my legs, minimize my food intake, and coo at plastic babies with fluttering eyelids. Every cultural signal I encountered featured men at the top of the food chain, giving me the morning news, leading Fortune 500 companies, accepting Nobel Prizes. It was only years later, while studying biology, that I found empowerment in an unexpected place. Through the tale of the spotted hyena's evolution, possibly one of the most inspirational examples of feminism in the natural world. Now notice that feminism in relation to this author, this Catherine Wu, is that it doesn't have anything to do with or it doesn't draw inspiration from social and political equality with men but with an animal in the animal kingdom that for the most part governs over men that dictates the life of men. So let me let me continue further on with this article. It says, and I quote, unlike most other mammals, spotted hyenas live in matriarchal societies led by alpha females. In these clans throughout sub-Saharan Africa, females do the majority of the hunting dictate the social structure and raise cubs as single mothers because most males in clans join from other groups. The highest ranking male in the group is often subservient to the most junior female. Male spotted hyenas have also evolved to be smaller than females. Now, first of all, just look at it. So, to her, this is inspirational. The condition of men or male hyenas, you can't call them men because men is a gender concept that applies to human beings. However, if you wanna start drawing analogies to the animal kingdom and how your aspirations are to, or your inspirations are drawn from Krakuta, Krakuta, from Spotted Hyenas. And that is the genus species name, Krakuta, Krakuta. If you're drawing inspiration from a social structure that's dictated by single mothers, where 
the Krakuta Krakuta have sexual dimorphism with women being the larger sex within the species. If that's where you're drawing your inspiration from, it's a telling indication that your aspirations are not for equality, but for power. You desire power. You want to rule over men. And I quote again, scientists have come to a few different conclusions about how, how hyena society works by studying different populations across Africa. But they've learned that cubs are born into a competitive world, immediately tussling for dominance, with sisters typically beating out brothers. Though siblicide occurs in many populations, it is now understood to be related to resource scarce, uh, scarcity. If they are lucky enough to blossom into adolescence, the vast majority of female hyenas leave, oh, excuse me, the vast majority of male hyenas leave their childhood clan. They wander the savanna alone until they assimilate into a new group at the bottom of the hierarchy of males, which are already at the bottom of the hierarchy of females. So, siblicide, meaning killing your sibling. Now, this woman is drawing inspiration of a group of animals that commit siblicide. Not the bonobos. Not gorillas. Yeah, shout out to the gorillas. <laughs> not from canines, but from hyenas who kill who kill their brothers and sisters. who have males that wander along the savannah until they can find a group of other hyenas and, and become at the bottom of the hierarchy in so joining said group. And let me, let me go back to it again. Their sisters, and I'm quoting, on the other hand, almost always stay with the clan that they're born into inheriting their mother's ranks in the complex social ladder. Power in these clans most often passes from female to female, much like the Amazon Greeks and Wonder Woman. Hyenas are a lineage of queens that prove the human assumption that patriarchies are inevitable or even natural, completely wrong. Now, I don't even know where any man has ever said that within the context of the animal kingdom, there aren't any other species of mammals in which there are patriarchies. And insofar as there are species within the animal kingdom that are patriarchies, does that necessarily imply that those patriarchies or tyrannical patriarchies or that within those species within the animal kingdom whereby there's sexual dimorphism which means that one gender or one sex within that species is larger than the other is necessarily a relationship or a context in which the larger species is tyrannical and uses violence as a strategy to impose its authority over those that are smaller. So yeah, I'm, you know, when, when you read shit like this, it's startling because it's telling, it's informative, it's instructive. And then she goes on to talk about how Hyenas are typically perceived as a rather less than 
desirable kind of animal or a less than respected or a lionized kind of animal. And here she goes, and I quote again from her. What's more, their vilification, and she's speaking of hyenas, their vilification in films like The Lion King as cackling, conniving scavengers is off base. Spotted hyenas are fiercely loyal to their packs, cooperating in everything from child care to distributing shares of food. They hunt at least 50% of their meals and have no tolerance for waste, consuming even the hooves, bones, and teeth of prey. So, that would, the, the ability to annihilate their prey is something that should be lauded. Now, you know, nature knows no waste. So I'm not making some sort of normative claim about the nastiness of these animals. I mean, they, they, they exist in nature. I mean, they are what they are. And, and they're driven by instinct. Which is different from human beings, by the way. We have the capacity to use reason and to not operate merely based upon our desires whether those desires stem from our emotions or whether they stem from our base physical desires. But what separates us from animals is our capacity and our ability to exercise judgment by means of utilizing our reason. But I digress. Let me go back to this article. And I'm quoting again. These powerful creatures are also keen and socially perceptive. Unlike most other animals, any given hyena in a clan knows each of the other members of her society on an individual level. Females will band together to bring down prey and quarreling friends will reconcile after fights. Researchers believe hyenas' intelligence and social sophistication may even be comparable to that of primates. Hyena packs more closely resemble groups of monkeys than those of other predators, and hyenas are the only known non-primate species to pass status from mother to daughter. So, she likens hyenas to monkeys which gives it some closeness some proximity to humanness because I mean if you're someone who studied biology you know of course that and if you buy into the concept of the theory of evolution you will know that Human beings are very closely related genetically to members of the great apes in relation to our connectivity to the great apes. See, a lot of human beings like to believe that we're not animals, but we are animals. We're just a highly evolved animal that has developed the capacity to communicate in a way in which other animals cannot. We have the capacity for collective learning. And we have a form of language that's so precise that we can leave information to not only those persons we're in immediate contact with, but also to posterity. So meaning, those who come after us we're able to articulate with by means of the written language, the written word, okay? And, and now we've even superseded that because we can leave audio and video recordings and we can leave programs, computer programs, by means of which to communicate with posterity. So, I mean, but 
the, the, the larger point I'm trying to draw here is that she is trying to develop a connectivity from hyenas to the human species. Because if they're like monkeys, then they're like us. Let me go back to the article. She says that perhaps it's no coincidence that other mammals that feature stable matrilineal communities, including lemurs and orcas, also exhibit great intelligence. In the spotted hyena population, matriarchy, as opposed to patriarchy, appears to have, uh, to have the advantage of maintaining genetic diversity. As the lower ranking sex, individual males are less likely to father a disproportionate number of cubs in one clan. Dominant females, which can only birth so many cubs at a time and often take multiple partners, do, run, uh, do not run this risk. So, in other words, hyenas are some hoes. <laughs> I mean, like, hyenas, they get to fuck multiple men in a lifetime, and that that's positive because it creates genetic diversity. Let me go back to it. In this way, female empowerment has served the spotted hyena well. Despite not being the largest animals roaming the savannah, it is arguably the most successful, outnumbering all other carnivores on the continent of Africa. But there's one aspect of the spotted hyena matriarchy that appears alarmingly misogynistic at first glance. Look between a lady hyena's back legs, with her permission of course, like a fucking hyena is going to be able to give you some fucking permission to look between her fucking legs. You'll find a thick phallic structure complete with a false scrotum and testes. This is the pseudo penis. A structure so convincing that for years researchers wondered if spotted hyenas were hermaphrodites. Man, motherfucking man. Okay, so it should be coming, it should be becoming even more apparent where the fuck this shit is going, man. Okay? Now, this is an old ass article. I mean, it's 2018 was when it was last updated, but it's germane to the conversation of what we're talking about. And the reference to in the manosphere, women who aspire to a gynocracy. It is fitting because it could be argued that many women in the black community want just what Miss Wu or Dr. Wu, I don't know if she's attained a PhD or not right now, I, I, I don't know, but this is what they aspire to. I mean, what the fuck? So is she suggesting that at some point Women all over the world develop matriarchal cultures like the hyenas and start to develop pseudo penises. Man, let me, let me go back to this shit here. She says, the internal plumbing remains the same. However, which means that females must urinate through the pseudo penis. They must have sex through the pseudo penis. They must even give birth through the pseudo penis. And though it remains flaccid during these acts, <laughs> it's a limp penis. <laughs> it's, it's a penis that doesn't become a rat, okay? It remains flaccid during these acts. The latter two ordeals are just complicated, are just as complicated and as painful as they sound. I mean, fuck. You mean you gotta give birth and fuck through a pseudo penis? That doesn't sound very optimal at all. But hey, we're gonna run with it.
She says, and I quote, I've been thinking a lot about the spotted hyena this year. And not just because of the mind boggling fact that these ladies push multiple three pound cubs through a fake penis and live to tell the tale. In many ways, their complexities echo so many human notions about the roles women can and cannot occupy. The idea of a woman at the helm remains a hard pill to swallow in our own society. A woman at the helm. A woman in control. Now this, like this woman just comes straight out. There's no fucking Freudian slipping here. This is just a bold admission about what the ambition actually is. It's about coming into power, running and controlling shit. There's references to siblicide, references to dominance hierarchies in which women are at the top of the chain. Now, you'll be scarce to find men who are actually going to argue for and advocate for and contemporarily that women need to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. So where the fuck is this going? Where the fuck is this going? Let me go back to the article. This past January, hundreds of thousands across the world marched for the second year in a row to protest the constraints on women in all walks of life. 55 years after the passage of the Equal Pay Act, women still make only 80 cents for every dollar earned by men, a gap that widens into a chasm for women of color. And in the prolonged wake of the Me Too movement, stories of sexual misconduct by powerful CEOs, Hollywood stars, and White House staff continue to appear in the news week after week. The scandals surrounding Harvey Weinstein, Larry Nassar, and countless others have empowered women everywhere to speak out. But every woman who has come forward to share her story also reminds us that ignorance and female marginalization are still the norm rather than the exception. Hyenas run a successful matriarchal society, but are they illustrating a fundamental contradiction to feminism by adopting the guise of males? When two females face off, the one losing the battle will actually get an erection to signify her submission. And in some instances, hyenas may even take things a step too far. Males are expected to be not just respectful of females, but absolutely deferential. And then she goes on to say, I'm not suggesting we try to emulate hyena societies. We're striving for gender equality, not a reversal of traditional subjugation. But should uh, but we should not have to succumb to the binary of patriarchal or matriarchal. There is a middle ground and it's completely achievable. To someday reach that compromise, our male-dominated society needs to study female empowerment. That's a fucking lie. You are suggesting that we emulate hyena societies. Why else even look at the shit? Why not look at another species of animal that doesn't have this kind of social structure? Why is it necessary to look at the social structure of an animal in which there is any kind of hierarchy? Why not look at, like say for example, the bonobos or some shit? Why not look at a less violent a less pernicious species of animal. Let me go back to the article. We can start by acknowledging that patriarchy isn't a necessary natural order. Powerful females abound in nature and govern complex societies of intelligent individuals. A culture led by women or women is not doomed or damned. In spotted hyena clans, Male stalking, harassment, and aggression 
towards females are taboo. These tactics simply don't work. If a guy wants to woo a girl, he waits patiently and earns her respect through deference and altruism. Because he knows he is not entitled to her affection or anatomy simply by virtue of being male. When it comes to hyena sex, it's the considerate guys who get the ladies. Human males take note. Now tell me, at what point does any man in vast numbers of the human species not woo women and not defer to women? What normal man is going to stalk a woman? Not what man that thinks highly of himself is going to walk around chasing after some fucking woman like this? I mean, like, you talk about a small number of men, of minority, like an infinitesimally small amount of men who engage in this kind of fucking pathological behavior, and then you act as if it's really actually normal, that it's part and parcel of our real and actual culture. Look, I, look, you know, I'm, I'm getting into the 30 minute mark and I don't wanna, you know, uh, be exhaustive with this, but I'm almost at the end. It says, and I quote, even the pseudopedus, torturous as it is, has a few tricks up its shaft. Rather than being a form of flattery, the mimicry of the female pseudopenis may actually be a way to outcompete the male penis. When male penises, well, it says when male males have penis power, they have the ability to hold that over females, says Bondar. I don't know who the fuck Bondar is. She never really actually makes reference to who Bondar is. But what the fuck is penis power? This, this is a throwback to Catherine McKinnon, who argues that the very act of having a penis and having sex is like an act of rape. Then this to me is just some stupid sick shit. But it is what it is. When males have penis power, they have the ability to hold that over females, says Bondar. Such is not the case with spotted hyenas. Their false penile structures are actually protective during sex during which a male penis must be inserted into, yes, you read that right, the female pseudopenis. The majority of the time, the female's reproductive tract is blocked by the phony scrotum, such that for sex to occur, a female must hold still and patiently retract her pseudopenis to reveal her vagina. In other words, sex doesn't happen without the female's full consent and cooperation. The pseudo-penis is a built-in anti-rape defense. Even after copulation, if the female decides the male wasn't actually worth her time, she could take advantage of the fact that the long urethra and vaginal tract converge and simply urinate to flush out the undeserving semen. As male-looking as the pseudo-penis is, it's one of the most strategic tools in the female arsenal. Female hyenas are aggressive, accomplished leaders who never have to second guess their own strength. Mothers remain the primary caregivers for cubs who are promptly abandoned by their fathers after birth. And the pseudo penis itself, it's a bit of a misnomer. It's actually a clitoris, just a very big one, which means female hyenas haven't manipulated their way to the top by assuming the traits of another sex. Rather, they're showcasing an exaggerated version of the most uniquely female anatomy. Hyenas with the most influence aren't masquerading as males. They're exerting their femininity and it's powerful as hell. Yeah, so there you have it. Hyenas have big fake ass penises. And although human beings shouldn't emulate them, we should actually be striving for equality. We can take a thing out of their playbook or two. 
Look, I've never in my life ever tried to take the pussy from a woman who didn't want to give up the pussy. And I know those are harsh words and terms, but that's just how the fuck I get down. I, I, like, I don't have any time to play games anymore. If you don't want to hear this type of content, don't fucking, don't, don't fucking listen. Don't tune in. Just get the fuck off the page. Go look at, go look at somebody else's shit. I keep it straight, no chaser here. But I'd be goddamn if I'm gonna sit there and fight and struggle to get some ass from anybody. For what? For fucking what? I don't want to be into somebody that's not into me. If you ain't trying to get down, get the fuck off. Peace. Goodbye. Holla at you. Let the dough knob hit you where the good Lord split you. In two places, the three, the three places it split you in. Your mouth, your vagina, and your rectum. I'll let you. But come on, man. I've never wanted to control and dominate a, a, a woman in my life. And I got two daughters. And I've always encouraged them to be the best versions of themselves they could be. I've told them where the money is in education. That it's not in art. That it's in the sciences. And that it's in technology. And that it's in math. And that they need to start educating themselves. And there's nothing wrong with a woman being independent. But there is something wrong with having children and wanting to be a single mom. And wanting to X the man out of the equation. That's complete and utter fucking bullshit to me. And if we're to emulate hyena culture and you're trying to X men out of the fucking equation, fuck you. Fuck you. But see, I'm starting to get mad and I'm starting to get incoherent. So, this is uh, another installment of Green Gorilla. And I'm the G with a PhD. I'm out. Be peaceful, people. I say peace. Hotel. One.